Today we're going to be talking about becoming more advanced on the duck call. We got Golden Boy joining us. If you've watched the channel very much, you've seen him before. He's going to be giving some tips and going over how becoming better on the duck call has made him a much more successful duck hunter. There's a lot here, so let's just jump right into it. You really come a long way in a short time. Kind of went from I'd say a Midwestern like double reedish style to more of the Arkansas single read. And what I mean by that is you were originally quieter on the call, less calling, only calling when you need to, which definitely works, kills a ton of ducks, but you've switched more to the Arkansas style, loud, obnoxious, lots of calling, single read style. What would you say has been the pros and cons of that? Like each side of that journey? Well, I'd say you can kill ducks either way. The pros of switching to the single read is I think, I, for me personally, I just enjoy it more. But it took a long time to get there, so that'd be a con, I guess, is the amount of practice <laughs> that it took and that it takes. Like, you know, it's July now. Stopped really, I mean, calling almost every day during duck season. So taking quite a bit of a hiatus from it, and I'm starting to pick it back up, and it's like, man, I'm rusty. Biggest pro is I'd say the Arkansas single read loud obnoxious style is more effective. We're hitting them from a long ways away. Generally we've got a couple of us or more calling. So I think that's more effective, um, especially when we're not using a spinner yeah. versus the quieter kind of Midwestern style where it's like, well, I hope they fly by and I'll give them a couple quacks see if they come in, which, which works. It can kill duck. A lot of times it's more about the right place, but it's it's more fun, and I think it's more effective at killing birds. I totally agree with you. You can kill birds both ways, but what getting advanced on the call will do for you, in my opinion, is just open your options up more. There's days when you're on the X where you found the birds where that quiet style will definitely get it done for you. But there's some days when you're simply just going to have to call them. You're going to have to get their attention like when you're trying to get birds at a distance or run traffic. And if you aren't able to like get on the call, you're, that option is just not available for you. Yeah, it's certainly more versatile. Now, the downside to it, in my opinion, is like you were saying that it is really fun and you become addicted to it. I love calling birds and make, watching them react to the call. There's days, though, when you don't need to call, but you're, the addiction is telling <laughs> yeah. you you need to call. <laughs> so, I got to call at this duck, yeah. even though it's kept up. And <laughs> yeah, crazy. so I would say that's definitely a weakness for us. I've noticed it like when you and I are hunting together, like there's definitely times where it takes us longer than it would somebody else that don't love calling to slow down. You sure. got to blow a few out of the hole, you know. Like, no, it'll work on the next one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got it. We got it. Yeah, no <laughs> you talked about just the difficulty of learning it. Talk a little bit about what that process was like. Well, before I made the switch, I had no idea how to actually push air into a duck call to make it sound good or the way it should sound. started off on the duck picker by duck commander and uh that first season you know most people would go like this put their hands over the ears when i was calling <laughs> and elliot was just kind enough to let me keep trying but i just didn't even know how to blow hot air into a single read that took a lot of practice of just practicing and building that muscle memory what would your practice typically look like just time with it i mean you can kind of hear hear it yourself and you, you can feel it when you're blowing hot air or when you're not, it just sounds better. And then it was helpful to have you to bounce stuff off of. That was pretty darn helpful. I just work on the five note call pretty much until I was comfortable with it, trying to build that muscle memory and go from there. For me, when I started, it was more of like a grunt, like a huh, 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 instead of a I mean, I thought it was more of a grunt. And there, I'm not saying there's not any grunt in there, but. There was very, there was just air coming out of my mouth. There wasn't, I wasn't blowing any hot, humid air on a, on a mirror to fog it up. Yeah. Like you I had perfected the grind for sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> Nailed that sucker. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, with that in mind, would you say that putting all that effort in and, and learning how to do these things on the call, would you say that you get more ducks now than you did, you know, with the previous style? Yeah, definitely. And I would say it's, it's not all calling. Like you said, I learned a lot. Uh, I can think of one day where I was hunting with Jeremy. If I would have been the duck hunter I was five or six years ago, would have shot like one duck maybe but we were really aggressive and there were multiple groups out in this pool no wind and um the hide was terrible but we kicked water and i was really aggressive with the call and that made a big difference and i just wouldn't have done any of those things really yeah. five years ago i just would have been silent and be like well i guess they're I guess they're not coming over here today <laughs> yeah that's what's so good. And I thought, I think that's what people who's never done it, who've never learned to like blow that loud style don't understand. You can make them come there on some days. Not, not every day, obviously, but. <laughs> it just gives you that last resort. I would call it if nothing else is going to work that might if you don't have that in your tool bag you're just like you said i guess they're not coming over here today let's go home yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah it kind of goes past the this is what like natural ducks may sound like and into something where I'm thinking maybe if I was that duck, I'm thinking, what's over there? For sure. I got to check it out. <laughs> yeah. And the curiosity kills the duck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I learned that at a early age, like just how far really loud calling can break them. I'm talking like a half, three quarters miles. I mean, you need the right conditions, but I guess I would break down duck hunting into four important categories. One, the number one most important being location. The number two being your hide. Number three, probably being your decoys and then number four calling and the calling can hurt you the most if you do it incorrectly and easily blow ducks out can easily overcall, but it can also be the game changer on some days when, when there's no other way to get on butt by calling. I've seen days, for instance, like where people think a spinner works just as good. I've seen days when they're not looking at your spinner, like they're just not looking in your direction. And then you get down on the call, they see your spinner, then they come. But mm. they would have never even looked like they're flying like perpendicular. Mm -hmm. And like you can literally see them turn to the call and then they lock on and they're in, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's just a huge benefit. And I think definitely worth everybody putting the time into, which you don't have to take it to a level we have. But any incremental improvement is going to be better than where you were. Wait, what's the number one thing that will make somebody better? It's probably just self-awareness of where you can improve on really i think seeing something you're not good at and just going for it i mean i know you pushed me to the single read uh quite a bit but it still took quite a bit of initiative like on my part to practice and and then it was just a matter of putting a lot of time on it because i remember that first year you blew it every day well how long would you go a day 10 to 20 minutes probably 10 to 25 minutes a day but i mean probably for two or three months all that before teal season teal season started it was pretty consistent day every day don't be afraid to ask questions and find somebody that maybe is uh you know that's already better than you and bounce off of them and just practice during the off season you'll get better you can't get worse yeah. hopefully. <laughs> that helped me a lot too finding somebody that could kind of mentor you and also, just listening to live ducks, obviously. I would always do that before I'd practice. Every time I'd listen to live ducks, because you, you can get fall in love with sounding like a duck call. And I know people like that. Better to sound like a duck. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Although, you know, like you were saying, you do have times where you're not trying to be realistic. You're just trying to be loud, and that's effective. But... Uh, it's still the core needs to be based on a duck, I would say. One of the big things that sold me on that style of calling was not just what I could do solo, but what you can do with other people who can blow that. It's real fun to team call when you're calling like that. What do you think is like a key to our success to that? How would you break that down to someone who's never done it or never been a part of that? I guess it kind of depends on like 
the situation. I think um, when I remember starting to call with you, like you kind of lead the pack and then I kind of fill in. And so that's kind of how we made our team. And I kind of just followed, followed you. And that's kind of what worked for us. Still do that. I think we still kind of build off each other. But you definitely got to have the right guys. It's important to, at that point, you're not only reading the ducks, but you got to be reading the other people calling. You can't be blowing loud when everybody's starting to get quiet. You know, right. like you're still over there just like hacking away on the L call and everybody else is kind of like shutting up. Yeah. So it's like, paying, like you said, paying attention to the group and kind of make sure, basically I would describe it as, you know, get loud on them until you get their attention. And then once you got them, progressively start easing back. And if they're coming, just completely quit for the most part, unless you kind of got just hit them on the corners like you were talking about earlier. But then if you lose them, everybody gets back on them again. Uh, but it's kind of like what I like to say, call as little as possible, but as much as it takes to make them do what you want them to do. And that's pretty much, you know. As little you know, as what, possible, but as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, as much as it takes. <laughs> when, once they break and do and they're doing what you want, stop. Because you can definitely overcall. But, and, and I will say there are those few days where they do want to be called all the way to the water. Like if you let off of them, you lose them and you got to really stay on them. But I would say those days are less than days when you need to just learn to be quiet when it's time to be quiet. One thing I noticed when I very first started hunting with you, even though you were kind of young and new on the call, you knew when to call at the right time, which is the most important thing. That's by far more important than what you sound like. So talk about that a little bit. I learned personally, mostly from Elliot from Freelance Duck Hunting. My first uh, two or three seasons were pretty much mostly hunting with him. So I guess I just learned to call on the corners and just watching Elliot call ducks. That's that's pretty much how I learned just watching. I guess when I was younger, I was like, it's a big hoop in the sky. And when they hit the outside of this hoop, you call and you bring them back into this side of the hoop. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. That's how I kind of saw it in my mind. And it's kind of something I feel like you almost got to learn a little bit at the beginning of each year till like come December, January, you just, you feel really confident. Oh, like this duck, like we'll agree, like we got to hit this duck hard or yeah. back off. The most important thing that a caller can do, no matter what skill level they're at, is pay attention to how the ducks are responding to your call that day. If you're blowing a certain call, like a feed call or a green call, whatever it is, and they're not reacting favorably to it, as in like they turn off when you do it, you need to quit doing it that way. You have to constantly be paying attention to how the ducks, you know, are they are they liking it, coming more to it, or are they kind of losing interest when you make a particular sound? And you have to constantly be adjusting. And this can change throughout the day. I mean. I can think back to a hunt we had. Well, this happens a lot to us, actually, but I can think back to a hunt we had on that reservoir with Todd. We had like a handful of ducks until lunch. And then from like lunch to two, they all liked it after that. So it's like, yeah. you know, like it can just change. You know, you got to constantly be trying and, but, you know, paying attention and adapting your calling strategy each particular day. Now the awesome. 